Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's carry on looking how we can implement achievements into our games. And this one is going to be all about time-based and time-restricted achievements. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial in this short series. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So much like we did last time, what we need to focus on first is actually creating the UI for that achievement. So let's go to our canvas achievement panel and let's duplicate the level finish image. So hold control, press D to duplicate. Let's change this to zero three and let's have it time based. And yep, yeah, I've already gone ahead and just created the little image that we're going to use. So we'll place it right there. Remember, we need to keep achievement title and achievement description, same objects. We don't need to duplicate them. The only real thing we need to do was that image. So as we know, we're going to need to work in the global achievement script. And I think it's worth pointing out at this point that no matter how many achievements you have, this uh, global achievement script is going to be the one that grows significantly. It's not going to take up too much room overall, ultimately, because realistically it's just a script you know you can have thousands of lines and the script is still not going to be anywhere near you know huge so just keep in mind that yep this is going to be the main script throughout any achievement you create but it's never going to be too big in inverted commas so as it loads up i'm going to talk about what we're going to do so initially we're going to have a trigger which is going to be where we start and then we've got to get to somewhere else by the time, uh, well, time runs out, I guess. And you can think of it as that is the simplest way of doing it, but then you can also create different uh, mechanisms based on that same generic process. For example, you've got to collect different things within a certain amount of time. You've got to complete the level within a certain amount of time. The process is still going to be the same as what we create in this. You just need to advance it just a little bit. So in this script now, what we need to do is work on the achievement uh, specific variables. And in this case, I am going to do what I've done before and have achievement 03 specific. And we're going to reference public game object. And it's going to be H03 image, semicolon. And next one is going to be public static bool and trigger h03 uh, semicolon in fact by default we will make that false as we know we should and then finally public int h03 code semicolon so again the same principle is going to work same way as always the previous ones we've done really so we'll need to do the first things first in void update and that is copy the last line of code where we get the integer which is inside the player pref and change it to h03 and remember at this point there is nothing attached to that player pref so it doesn't matter it's always going to return zero which means it's a fresh uh, achievement that we can unlock so just make sure that we have h03 code equals playerprefs.getInt and then the name of whatever you have right here. So by that premise, we then need to have if, and in brackets, trigger h02 equals true and h03 code is not equal to, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7. Again, that's literally any code or any number that you would like to have. And although we haven't written the coroutine yet, I'm just going to keep it uniform. So it's going to be start coroutine, and then brackets, trigger 03, atch, oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. And I'm going to save that script for now. We're going to return an error, obviously, because we've not created that coroutine. But we have the basic mechanism in place now. So what that means is we can go ahead and actually set our triggering mechanism in a separate script in the scene. So let's start by adding a, uh, a trigger somewhere here. So a game object, 3D object and cube. And let's bring it into position. So somewhere here, I guess. 
uh, probably rotate so it goes across the path and increase the scale uh, on the X rather than the Z. And I'm just going to call this time trigger. And obviously we need to tick is trigger. So we're going to create a script now to attach to this trigger right here. And yeah, it's in a reasonable position, so we can easily trigger that. So right click, create and C sharp script. And let's have this as timer trigger. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. And first things first, we need to declare just a couple of variables. So the first variable is going to be the new object that we set active, i.e. what we need to collect. So public game object, we'll call this uh, final time trigger, semicolon. And I think pretty much that's all we're really going to need at this point. Um, because ultimately, um, just trying to think, because we're going to need to turn off this object at one point anyway, but we can leave that just for now. So we're going to need to get rid of void start, void update, because this is all going to be done via void on trigger enter. It doesn't need to be private, so we can get rid of that. And what we do is final time trigger dot set active true semicolon and save let's head back to unity and let's attach this script to our trigger drag and drop um oh okay ah okay so i think uh, the reason that's happening is because if we go back to global achievements and let's just um kind of annot out this line right here so we don't get any errors within any code so it's clear, clear from the console. There we go. So let's try attaching that script again. Now let's click on there and we have to create this object. So let's say we want to get from here to here within, let's say, five seconds. So five seconds to get from here to here. And again, like I say, if you're doing this level based, you would have however long you want to complete the level. If you're doing it collection based, like we did with this, you can combine this tutorial with time versus the first tutorial we did versus collection. You can mash the two together and create another achievement. So that's the beauty of teaching all these different achievement mechanics. You can combine them to create different ones. So I'm actually going to take this object here, the time trigger, hold control, press D to duplicate, rename it to fin time trigger and then I'm going to bring it over here somewhere about there and I'm actually going to remove the timer trigger from it so right click remove and I'm going to keep it is trigger the reason being is because this is also going to be a trigger now as we've created that finishing time trigger we can actually attach that as a variable on our original object so drag and drop to there so what's happening here is when we trigger this this new game object will be set active and this one is going to contain the script that we're going to write now so right click create c sharp script timer finish and i guess you can call it anything you want again it's all about you know teaching you the basic mechanics of how we can create these achievements you just need to utilize it modify it and combine it so we have this now active and what this means is that we have to basically say within an I enumerator that we have to make this object disappear after five seconds. So I enumerator and we'll call it, uh, let's just call it time achieve, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll have yield return new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, what we need to do is just put however long we want. So again, if you want to do a level within, let's say, 75 seconds, you would have wait for seconds 75 before the achievement becomes un unobtainable. Uh, close bracket, semicolon. And what we have to decide now is what we're going to do here. Well, let's destroy, and in brackets, game object. So then it just becomes completely unobtainable.
you could turn it off and then return the original achievement back on but I guess it's up to you if you want to have multiple chances at getting an achievement. If you do, that would be the way you do it. So, what do we do now? Well, we have to actually enable ourselves to start this coroutine. So in void start, we need to have start coroutine. And in brackets, it's going to be time achieve, which is this that we've just written. Easy as that. So we now have it active, but we also have to enable ourselves to say, right, well, we're going to collide with it. We've done it. So no matter what, we need to actually trigger that achievement. So let's get rid of void update and the annotations because we don't need them. Now let's have void on trigger enter. Doesn't need to be private yet again. And just like we've done in previous achievements, for example, collect cube, what we need to do is reference that achievement in global achievements. So we need to say that trigger at 03 equals true. So global achievements dot trigger at 03 equals true. Semicolon. And after that, we destroy the game object. So no matter what, it's still going to be destroyed. But again, you don't have to if you don't want to. So game object, semicolon, save. Let's head back into Unity and attach that timer finish script onto the time trigger right there. So as soon as it's compiled, there we go. Drag and drop onto there. And then let's turn this object off up here because we don't need it active. So the last thing to do is inside the global achievements section, we need to create the coroutine for number three. And yep, we can copy and paste what we've previously done for number two and change it to trigger 03 hatch. And then we need to reference everything according to what we've created. So this first one, that's fine. This one will be number three. And we have the code as one, two, three, four, seven, which means that the player prefs, we're setting that integer in h03 using h03 code which we're setting here so we play the achievement sound we show achievement 3 image achievement title we can set and let's call this well timed you created a time based achievement and then we set everything active. So it's on for seven seconds. After the seven seconds, we reset everything as we've done previously. We just need to make sure that we turn everything off and reset everything as it should be. So if we save that script now and head back into Unity, we just need to basically work with our achievement log and add the extra variable in here. So drag and drop that time-based image onto there. I'm going to save that project and I'm going to take my first person controller a little closer to the trigger so we can save a little bit of time there. So about there. Press play and now let's try out the time based achievement. So what I'm going to do is I'm initially going to not reach the trigger. So there we go. Our time trigger has appeared. Oh, and we didn't make it. So that's fine. So achievement didn't appear. So if we try again, we'll make it quicker and trigger that achievement. And it did, I don't think we made it, did we? I don't think we actually made it. What I might need to do is move it a little bit closer. Uh, let's move it to here, turn it back on so we can see. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now let's actually uh, try it. I guess five seconds wasn't enough, maybe. Okay, so there we go. And it still didn't do it. Okay, so this is a good chance for us to debug what is going on here. So let's double check we're getting everything right. So if we go to our achievement log and press play, we can see that the achievement 03 code is set as zero as it should be, which means something is going wrong. 
because we're saying that basically as soon as we cross that line up here there we go we annotated that one out didn't we we sure did and because of that jimmy now looks like a fool so just be careful when uh, you're dealing with that kind of thing you probably you know blank lines out when you shouldn't be so just to reiterate here so we've gone through the original trigger and let's say we don't quite make it it's gone no achievement and this time let's make that achievement trigger so all the way and it still didn't want to do it did it okay this is a little bit unexpected i didn't expect that to happen so yeah it would help do you know you, you guys would be amazed at how many times these things i'm hoping i'm hoping some of you guys scream jimmy jimmy it's that if statement and if you did well done you passed the test that was a test guys <laughs> if only yeah the amount of times that you'll make silly mistakes like that from time to time is just absolutely insane within coding and sometimes it can be just a, a number as simple as that that will cause you to just lose your mind in trying to deal with things so it's gone third time lucky guys i apologize for my stupidity guys i honestly apologize so let's trigger it now there we go so we triggered that achievement and once again we've already triggered it now so that ultimately means that we can no longer trigger it because we already have it again if you want to be able to re-trigger achievements you have to reset those achievement codes these ones over here so guys that's how you create a time-based achievement don't forget you can combine all of these to create different achievement styles so next time we're going to take a look at another style of achievement which you can probably combine with many other things so until that next tutorial guys thank you very much for watching